uh, it's Subharata, uh, who will tell us about like how you can secure access to high-performing API in a regulated environment. Hello, Subharata, how are you? Hi, uh, Mehdi, are you able to hear me clearly? Yes, we can hear you clearly. Thank you very much for being with us. I know it's late uh, where you are, but thank you for uh, time zones are so 2019, right? You know, uh, it's we, we forgot time zones uh, with these remote events, but yeah, no, uh, locally uh, uh, there's still time. But thank you very much for being with us. We can see uh, your slides, uh, yeah, right, right. Uh, uh, with the Danske Bank uh, logo, and you can go full screen. Yes, that's good. Let's go all for right. 20 minutes. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I, uh, so my name is uh, Subhabrata, uh, Subhabrata Chatterjee. I am an architect and a chapter lead uh, cloud uh, specialist in Danske Bank. Uh, uh, let me tell, it, uh, tell you a little bit about Danske Bank. Uh, Danske Bank is uh, one of the leading bank. It is the leading bank of Denmark, and it is uh, one of the leading bank of the uh, Nordic region. It also has operates uh, its business in uh, about uh, 10 countries. And today, my topic is uh, not exactly on the digital economy, uh, but it's on, but it's definitely on, uh, you know, how to build APIs, how to run APIs uh, secure uh, in a regulated environment. And, and next 20 minutes, I'm going to provide a lot of information, and hopefully that's going to be meaningful for everyone. Uh, uh, so I'll uh, move on uh, to my first uh, slide here. Uh, about all the eminent speakers, guest speakers, about what digital economy is, how to, uh, what are the main drivers? So digital, uh, the main drivers obviously are the consumer expectation. So we all are using as consumers a lot of mobile devices, and that expectation is creeping from a public life into the business. So we are expecting the same from the uh, traditional banks as well as. Uh, so we are using apps from new banks and we are using app, apps from traditional banks. We are comparing the user experience in you know across all the devices and channels. Secondly, uh, the cloud providers, uh, we have the another uh, pull, you can say pull from the uh, from uh, the IT side is coming from the, uh, the cloud providers, public and hybrid, uh, who are providing a lot of services uh, and driving innovations outside the premises. So now the traditional banks are also uh, thinking outside the box and trying to make their financial services available uh, using innovation. Fintechs, obviously, obviously there are many uh, new banks. I will not be naming them. I mean, you've been hearing a lot of them across the geographics of the world, uh, especially in the first two or three uh, presentation today. So uh, fintechs are driving a lot of innovations and uh, especially in terms of uh, enabling loans, offering loans using, you know, insights, uh, applying machine learning, etc. cetera. But uh, uh, the common phenomena is they are providing great user experience. And last but not least, I'm not sure if, if, uh, if this has been covered by our earlier speakers, uh, even within the enterprise, in the company, the employees are also anticipating a lot of great experience, a digital workplace. So overall, uh, overall the, the organizations are, need to shape up and uh, make uh, the API development within an enterprise great. Now let's see uh, what really looks like. So uh, this slide, I'm going to talk about real world challenges. We've got to build a lot of APIs, great. Uh, but within the company, what are the re real world challenges? If you look at that, uh, we heard about APIs and microservices, monoliths uh, throughout the day. A lot of speakers have been talking about API security, marketplaces, I attended many of them. Uh, all those are great things, but when you really, when the rubber meets the road, right, you, you've got to talk about data distribution. How are going to, how are going to break the, how you're going to break the monolith into microservices and API. So in the diagram, if you can see uh, on the right-hand side of the diagram, there are uh, two uh, pillars or two parts. The, uh, the rightmost one is the public cloud. You can, you can think of all greenfield applications being developed there. And on the Slightly left uh, from the right, there is a uh, the, there is a public uh, there is a private cloud or hybrid cloud where uh, we the existing applications, the legacy applications, the world of mainframes and other legacy applications, they are coexisting. Uh, at the same time, we are building uh, where we are building <clears throat> greenfield applications. We are migrating the existing applications uh, to the uh, to the uh, cloud or. Uh, exposing them to our partners and open banking is one such uh, great example or the financial institutions 
in Europe. Uh, Danske Bank is not, ex uh, not an exception. It's also providing uh, uh, APIs for uh, open banking to a great number of uh, consumers or customers. We need end-to-end -end traceability as we, uh, we have entered the world of APIs and APIs maybe 10 years before and microservices about five to seven years before, uh, roughly. Uh, so now, the, now all of a sudden we have an explosion of services. We have intricate communications happening between them. So how do we, how do we track the failures? We need end-to-end -end traceability. I'm going to touch upon a little bit on the solutions in the forthcoming slides. Uh, but uh, the one more thing is the low latency, low latency requirements. So we, we got to have a, a low latency requirements because uh, we have been talking uh, all about uh, uh, this uh, traceability and user experience. But don't forget, if you have to provide a lot of data, particularly to open banking, uh, then that comes at a cost, right? The, this comes at a cost of uh, how do you aggregate them? How do you provide them with uh, definitely sub-second, but let's say 100 millisecond uh, latency? Uh, can you do that? Uh, what are the problems in that? And then the uh, last part, uh, then there's an ever-changing tech stack. So when I say ever-changing tech stack, we talk talk about polyglot platforms, microservices, polyglot programming. So multiple stacks are coexisting along with the legacy stacks. The developers are constantly evol uh, evolving. They're constantly uh, adapting to the situation. So it's a challenge for them as well. <clears throat> We have a lot of compliance and regulations. I've listed them. Uh, GDPR is the top one. PCI, SOX, uh, uh, open banking. All of them, if you see the common theme is uh, you have to protect the uh, protect the shareholders' interest. You have to protect your systems from external attacks, intrusions, uh, denial of services. Uh, we, you also uh, need to report a lot of things. You just don't, not, don't you need to uh, hide the card, the cardholder information, but also, you need to protect your own system from attacks. So the list can go. I have not mentioned fix, and I realize adding fix to this line will not fix the problem of too many standards. We have too many standards. <clears throat> so uh, security is whose concern? We've seen all of this. So that's a big question. Uh, we, it's whose concern? We, we have so many problems in hand. I think it's a shared concern. That's kind of talk about that. Uh, I'll move on to the next slide. Uh, so authentication of uh, end users, risk and security concerns. Uh, we have been talking about this throughout the day. We all know that. Uh, then we have <clears throat> complex call chains because we have a, we have a multi-layered architecture with you know uh, experience APIs, process APIs, core APIs, and whatnot. And microservices are not, not made the matter easier. <clears throat> we have uh, fine-grained data access requirements. Uh, we have uh, data protection rules. It, I talked about some of the uh, standards in the earlier slide, and they have. Uh, we have uh, this. <clears throat> we also need to meet the availability of services. So there are stringent uh, SLAs, particularly uh, let's say in open banking. If you if you do not meet the standards, uh, you will be violating the SLA, and if you violate the SLA, the financial institute, the bank has to pay a fine, or even if you don't protect your data. If there is a big uh, breach, uh, you, you, you get a, a financial uh, pen penalty, you get reputational, reputational damages, and, and uh, it, the list goes on. So uh, you need to maintain an audit trail because some of the compliances uh, enforce that you need to provide an audit trail of user accesses, uh, breaches, et cetera, of your, how your systems interact. Uh, are you really protecting your cardholder information, et cetera? Uh, and then last but not least, you need to back up your data. I mean, so you may, you may think that, uh, okay, I after repeating all of this, I, as an API developer, as an engineer, I feel like uh, Tom Hanks in the movie Terminal, right? Tom Hanks is trying to step, step into New York. Uh, think about it, the API developer wants to go to take his application to production. And there are so many things to, on the security front he's concerned about. So. Can he, can he get out of the terminal? Can he step onto the road where the rubber meets road? Yep, all right. Uh, so uh, security and uh, runtime uh, solutions. <clears throat> uh, this diagram, I was I managed to uh, put a diagram on the right-hand side. So if you if you look at it, identity and token service is a top concern. So you, you have the likes of secure token services, uh, you know, OAuth, my uh, fellow uh, uh, speakers have talked about OAuth. So OAuth has, I'm not going to deep dive into how the OAuth exchange uh, happens. 
but we need it, we do get a uh, temporary token which is live which protects the this is a solution which protects the uh, consumer you don't need to exchange the uh, ids and the passwords uh, then the next one is authorization policy uh, the green one in this <clears throat> diagram is the policy and every api is secured by an authorization policy if you look at the public cloud providers of uh, you know all the public cloud providers they have a uh, they have great policies and uh, aws is one as one such example uh, so we have the apis uh, having fine grained policies about what what access is given or what is denied at a at an endpoint level so you can you can put uh, you can create an object uh, in a bucket or you can remove an object in a bucket just for an example uh, 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 then these claims so and then you can attach or detach a policy to a role to a group or to a, a user i'll not get into the de details but in in uh, my organization we are also dealing it's uh, so at theoretically it, it, these are all good but when you come to the reality consumers they don't care consumers will not care about so many you know intricate policies if you just ask about okay i want to attach this policy uh, you 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 provide your uh, access privileges in the jwt token okay that makes my application very very complex consumers are not happy uh, you you can you can as a service provider as an api provider you can ask okay give me 10 of your privileges i have 10 uh, i have 10 apis you give you have to get access to 30 different uh, you know access rights and you got to provide those access rights in a jwt token does that work for you no, the consumer might say that that doesn't work for me. And if I ask them, okay, give me your, uh, give me the end user ID. They, they will tell you, how can I get my mobile pay end user ID? How can I get my commercial, the merchant center uh, end user ID? I cannot provide them. So these are practical problems that you need to deal with before taking the, uh, during the design phase, obviously uh, before going to production. And then you need to conduct a, uh, uh, I'll not get into all of them. We have vulnerability testing, OSS code image scanning. Uh, I'm going to talk about a few of the things that the developer can do to speed up things. Uh, backup and recovery is being, <clears throat> uh, nowadays the backup and recovery, they are being uh, uh, provided as a managed services, both in hybrid cloud and in public cloud. Uh, we have managed databases uh, with very high uh, resiliency, scalability, and availability, along with the backup and recovery. Uh, in an elastic manner. Uh, last, <clears throat> the last topic is a big one. I would have loved to talk about telemetry and events. So these are insights. Insights cover everything. So you talk uh, the a, a core part of all microservices, APIs, and also security events uh, in order to uh, run your application with excellence, with for your runtime excellence, for your operational excellence, you need to have very strong insights enabled by telemetry and events. These are also known as observability, another term in the industry. So I, I look at it as monitoring plus logging plus alerting plus, you know, plus events and distributed tracing, all of this come together. And some people and in the industry, they are being spoken of as observability. I'll not <clears throat> dive deeper into that. So move on to the next one slide. And uh, uh, I think I've got uh, uh, quite a few minutes left. Uh, the, so this, now I'm getting into the design and uh, build perspective from uh, from the uh, earlier uh, view of the security perspective. So uh, as a designer, as a as a builder or an API engineer, you need to con you need to consider various uh, you know access patterns and APIs. Like you have the REST APIs, <clears throat> you have the uh, uh, models. You can have GraphQLs. You also need to consider asynchronous data access patterns like events, which we are using in the bank so all uh, for a microservices and api for communications between the microservices api we need to consider uh, event based patterns or asynchronous patterns uh, which does not really lock the resources and keep the users waiting we have then this is a very specific concern central policy service what does this mean by domain level authorization so you can have a central authorization policy which can tell you okay this api exactly in this country in Sweden or Norway, uh, this country, this API uh, can, uh, with using this API and customer can open an account or cannot open an account because uh, this is from a different country. So these uh, can be probably done by a central policy service, but it's not so easy, but sometimes it's very specific to the domain. It can be specific to the, to the customer domain organization, or it can be specific to the type of account and country. 
it's not easy to build such a uh, central authorization system. And bear in mind, you have to consider the latency also, because you need to again provide uh, millisecond level latency for this is just a tiny bit. The authorization is an authentication. This is tiny bit in the whole complex chain. I talked about the complex chain a few slides earlier. So you sometimes have to ch choose between uh, as a design decision or solution design uh, between the central policy service or enterprise service at a domain level service or a you know a bespoke service which gives you quick quick at authorization as a you know using an event or using an api it can be just a simple ldap based uh, authorization so this is a custom versus central policy uh, the third one from the top of the list is microservices and data ownership so if you, if you look at the diagram as we as we uh, divide try to divide and conquer we we talk about strangling the monolith. We talk about you know breaking this, uh, breaking the silos, building independent deployable units. Well, on the paper they are all easy, but when you try to move the data around, where is who has the data ownership? When you try when you move uh, move out customer uh, 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 customer system, you know account system, communications system. So you, when you break them and try to move them around, who has the not only the ownership? How do they exchange? You got when you are opening an account or you are changing it, you you creating a mandate or uh, you know removing a mandate on account. You are trying to block a card. You got to check the customer also. Does the customer have eligibility to open an account? Does the customer is the customer younger? So you have to access the customer level privileges. You have to access the customer systems. Therefore, an account system also needs to have access to the customer events. And this is where microservice to microservice communication comes into play, right? So we we deal with these business problems and technology problems. It's they are intricately woven. We we <clears throat> the technology problems and they coexist. So you have the latency problem, you have the data uh, data segregation problem, and you also have the uh, security problem. Right? These are I think these are the three big ones. And when a uh, and how are they solved? Some of the way the so the developer tries to divide and conquer, and they, they go for. Uh, if you if you see the top layer in my diagram, some of the solutions are like observability on the left hand side. Then uh, the uh, the airplane the icon is for CI/CD, not just CI/CD. It's over overall automation. So you need to automate your infrastructure provisioning. This, the CI/CD being written as a written as a minimal code, and security can be also be written as a code, written as a code. So you let's say you are accessing an ADFS system. I want to get it. JW token from an ADFS system, ADFS system or, and, or you need to encrypt the data and you need to use a certain kind of cipher. Why you can write a, let's say YAML pro, YAML uh, snippet, you can write a configuration where bulk, much of this are already pre-coded and the framework takes care of it. You have frameworks which are taking care of it. This speeds up development and the, uh, the, uh, the engineer or API can focus on the business logic because uh, one cannot, the de deal with so many things at the same time you, you, you have to either focus on the events or the you know customer level authorizations or infrastructure so we need to divide and conquer we need to automate all of these to really achieve uh, all uh, these runtime uh, runtime aspects as well as design and build aspects i talked about managed services i, so I will uh, kind of skip over this uh, cloud is a big topic and uh, yeah, all the managed services really uh, takes care of that. Uh, distributed tracing, I talked about that. We need to, uh, it, uh, actually enterprises are developing end to, uh, there isn't too many end to end distributed services. <clears throat> and the problem is with really sharing the correlation ID. So if you have an API gateway on the top and if you need to uh, you know, uh, transmit or propagate the correlation ID between the platforms, it's sometimes becomes tricky and then it cannot exchange. So you need a distributed Pressing custom solution to take care of that. Last but not least, don't forget about testing. Authentication, authentication and authorization be, should become part of your code testing. I think I have about uh, one minute left. So I'll go to this, uh, uh, move to this uh, last bit, which is the it's kind of a uh, architecture diagram uh, of uh, solution architecture, which covers uh, the various bits, which I was talking about, the building blocks like API gateway, I guess all the speakers talk about and give presentation about API Gateway. Uh, it's a core building block because it provides security, kind of security out of the box, uh, firewalls, denial of service attacks, uh, 
it's an API management platform. It's a developer marketplace also. It's, by the way, when I say API Gateway, it's API Gateway plus developer portal. So you, you can plug and play. You can make your services visible or invisible. And the, the API Gateway also integrates well with a directory or token service. So like, let's say it can call an uh, Active Directory or uh, NEFS, and it can validate a JW token, which is expired or not expired. So it can do a lot of functions. But sometimes I talked about if you don't have a central authorization, you have to you may come up with a uh, token based. Uh, you may come up with a custom solution. So if you look at the LDAP directory one, just uh, on uh, next to the API, uh, there's a directory icon. So this is kind of a bespoke solution where it's not very, uh, uh, it's not a standard uh, federated service or a uh, secure token service. Uh, I have mentioned about PubSub. Uh, uh, Okay, let me just go to the middle. The middle, uh, uh, the hexagons are basically microservices. Organization is a microservice and account is a microservice. Uh, and they are exchanging information uh, using events uh, in a messaging way. They are also publishing. So they are, they, they are publishing the, all the events, customer creation, customer de, you know, deletion, addition, et cetera, organization creation to, a, to an enterprise uh, PubSub platform. So if account publishes something, customer can know that, organization can be aware of that, and organization publishes whenever something is changed. So the, there, there is this, uh, so this is core part of a microservices architecture. Uh, because you are separating, you need to aggregate them. And, and uh, I've not showed it in this diagram. Uh, for improving latency, you need, to, you need to aggregate data. So the events, what they're doing is the subscriber they're subscribing them and they're, they're storing them in their local data store. So the mobile pay, the world of your mobile apps uh, or any other web apps, they, they can store, they are storing the anti-money laundering systems or let's say other platforms. Uh, they are storing them locally to reduce latency, right? It's very important uh, to reduce latency to achieve all of this. Uh, now, moving on to the right-hand side of my diagram, you have this series of this vertical bar Visioning is, and, and this is being implemented uh, already in, in the many external platform, cloud platforms, but within the enterprise, it's not so easy to, to provide all of these as discrete services or microservices. So way to tokenize, you need this obviously, uh, authorizes for finding authorization. Gateway is a kind of a common service for inter, you can say inter uh, microservice, or it's also a gateway to the public cloud. Gateway service is a, is a way which gives you permission to connect to the public uh, public cloud kind of. Uh, and encryption service, uh, you, you call the service, you provide a data element and the encryption service uh, kind of encrypts and gives you back. That's, uh, that's a vision uh, uh, which is uh, depicted here. Last but not least, the key management service, which basically gives you the uh, secret key using which uh, you can encrypt or you can use this to, you know, basically pull a key from a vault and then uh, you know encrypt it or using it to decrypt a data piece. Uh, and on the right hand side is a, is a communication with the uh, public cloud. So you can, you can burst into public cloud or if you are sharing data in a file or in a streaming way, any anyways, or using it as API, uh, this is basically the communication which is made possible. That's the uh, architecture diagram. I may be having only a few minutes left, uh, but uh, if there are any questions, uh, I can. Uh, I think I have come to the end of my uh, presentation. But if there are any questions on any of the previous slides or this slide, uh, I can take that. Yeah, thank you, uh, Swabrata. Uh, so we we are out of time, but I will just ask just uh, one question: Is like yeah. how big uh, an IT team should be to handle all this stuff? Because with more regulation and more protocol security patterns and 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 compliance issues. Uh, you know, like it seems many companies cannot address it all. Um, how big an IT team should be uh, to address all of this? That's a great question and a, and a tough one. Uh, it, it depends on the maturity and evolution of, uh, of the organization. Uh, typically, uh, uh, an API uh, first journey uh, and, you know, microservices and a cloud first journey, it's, it, it expands uh, Anywhere between uh, three years and five years to for, to reach in an, an intermediate level, it takes about two to three years. So initially, the team size uh, can be big. I cannot put a specific number, but uh, what I have observed in most of the companies, the uh, team may start uh, somewhere between, 50, let's say, 
10 to 15 members in a team and this is just a ballpark estimate and as the as it matures as the you know api specialists and cloud specialists they get matured uh, the team size can actually go down from a 15 to let's say somewhere between you know uh, 5 to 10 members but again it as i mentioned it it evolves it varies from uh, organization organization and uh, mid sized organization and sometimes they are more mature uh, well calibrated and they can take uh, uh, more risk and uh, yeah, it, dep it depends on the engineering maturity and the ability to take uh, risk and it depends on the automation also how, how fast you can progress on the automation side uh, with all of these yeah thank you Subhabrata uh, we've reached the time but uh, yeah we'll be glad to invite you in a more time zone friendly conference uh, in the future uh, thank yeah. you it was really insightful and really explaining the whole large complexity of what was happening Thank you, uh, Thank you. enjoy uh, and so